So I just recently celebrated a birthday and I was reading an article about some things that everyone's going to want to do when they're in their 30s. And I thought this is a great place to share that article with you. And the thing that I found was the most important on this list was... What's up everyone, welcome back to Free To Be, David here, and thank you for joining me for another video. Now recently I was going through some articles and I came across one that mentioned a few things that every single person should be doing when they're in their 30s, and I wanted to share that list with you. Now before I get started, as always, if you are new to my channel, I cover financial literacy here in an effort to track my progress to financial independence, and hopefully by doing that, I'm creating some valuable content that others can use as well. So if you are new to the channel, please take a moment and just click the subscribe button down below. I really do appreciate the support. And if you're not new, thank you for coming back again. All right, so this article contains some typical standard financial advice, but there were a few items on this list that I thought were really important and really stuck with me, so I thought I'd share them with you here today. Now, they're not in any particular order in terms of importance, but I think it is important to watch this whole video so that you're aware of every single item that I cover here today. And if you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button. All right, so the first item on the list is to make sure your money is somewhere where it's earning as much as possible for you. If you just have a standard savings or checking account with you know a national or global bank you might not be earning as much money on that money as you think you are you know there's definitely competition out there with banks vying for your business and some of them have pretty high interest rates that they can offer you so you're going to want to spend some time to reevaluate what you're doing with your cash if you're just putting it in a checking account and don't have any savings accounts open you might want to consider opening up a savings account that can yield you know half a percent, a percent, percent and a half of interest for you every single month. And one of the things you're going to want to explore when doing this is online savings accounts. Because again, with a savings account, you're not really going to be touching the money that often. So it's okay keeping it somewhere where you don't need to access it right away. Just make sure that whatever bank you do go with or financial institution you do go with is trusted and reputable. And again, the point of this is to maximize the money that you do have it. every single month. You're going to want to get the best interest rate on your money. So if you haven't evaluated evaluated what you're doing with that cash make sure to do that now. Now the next item on this list is to start thinking about your family more. You know, as we get in our 30s and progress through our 30s, we start building a family, whether that's getting married and having kids, you know, a partner, whatever the case may be, you're starting to build this family. And what you're going to want to do is start thinking about them, you know, after you're gone. And it is kind of a morbid thought to have, you know, especially if you're in your early 30s or your mid 30s, but you have to think about it. So if you don't have one in place already, start looking at life insurance policies and try to see if you can secure somewhere in the $1 million range so that you can leave your family behind a decent amount of financial contribution long after you're gone. And this will just ensure that they have the finances to cover, you know, the mortgage that you might leave behind, uh, any costs or debt that might be outstanding that might actually carry over to them. And you just want to make sure that they have a good enough financial footing so that they're not put in any kind of financially compromised position after you're gone. And again, it's a weird thing to be thinking about just a couple weeks after my birthday, but it is something you have to consider. If you don't have one in place, start looking at different options for life insurance, and I recommend getting somewhere in the $1 million range in terms of coverage. Now, the next item on this list is shopping for car insurance, and this is something that, you know, I've been putting off for a while now too, but if you're not shopping for car insurance every couple years, you're most likely paying too much for your existing insurance, and that may be as simple as just contacting your insurance provider and maybe, you know, threatening to walk away or you know uh, moving on to a different company or provider that might actually secure you a better deal it might be as much as going and getting another offer and seeing if your existing provider can match that offer but it's something that you're going to want to reevaluate every couple years because it can add up and save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single year now again I'm guilty of this I don't think I've actually shopped around for insurance in probably four or five years but it's something that I'm going to be looking into very soon because again 
it's one of those recurring costs that you can't get away from, especially if you own a car. Um, you know, every single month you're paying car insurance, if you're paying it on a six month basis. So you're gonna wanna make sure you're getting the best deal possible. And the only way you can do that is to proactively go out there and shop for new insurance, you know, every couple of years. Or you can just decide to get rid of the car and rely just on public transportation. Now, the next item on the list is to start investing if you haven't done so already. And I know at this point in our lives, if you're watching a financial literacy channel, you're probably, you know, knee deep in investing in the stock market. But if you haven't done so already, open up a trading account, open up a brokerage account and invest $10, $50, $100, whatever you can. Just start snowballing and start investing now. Don't delay it any further because investing is one of those long-term plays that you're going to wanna make sure that you can invest as much as possible at an early enough age so that the dividends and payoffs really exponentially increase for you 20, 30 years down the line. So don't say I'm gonna wait till I'm in my 40s and 50s so I'm a little bit more financially secure before I start investing. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and just open a Robinhood trading account. It's really easy to get started. I'll throw a link down below. And just by signing up, you'll get a free stock. I'll get a free stock because they are one of my affiliate partners and you can start investing in the stock market today. Now for me, again, I think I started investing maybe about seven years ago, which in my opinion is later than I would have liked it to be. Ideally, you you want to start investing as young as possible. If you're 22, 23 years old, start investing. As soon as you get that first job out of college, start investing. The longer you have, the better off you will be. And also what that does is if you are impacted by some crazy uh, economic turn, you know, like the recession or the pandemic, you also have more time to recover from something like that if you're investing at a young age. Now, the next thing on the list is to stop paying credit card companies. If you're in your mid thirties, there should be no reason you are still paying credit card interest every single month. You need to figure out a way out of that routine. If you have credit card debt, you should try everything you can in your power to eliminate all of that as soon as possible because it just doesn't make sense to pay 23, 26% interest on that debt every single month. Again, that's money that you could be using and investing in your future. So if you have some, start planning right now to get rid of that debt. If that means starting with the smaller amounts first and rolling them into the bigger amounts, do that. If that means coming up with an action plan and consolidating your debt using a personal loan, do that as well. But this is a time where you should be thinking and focusing on eliminating any credit card debt you have so that you stop paying those credit card companies such high interest rates. And I understand this is definitely not an easy process and it's not something that can be done overnight. So you have to really be committed to it and want to do that. And in your 30s, that's prime time to be doing that as well. Because again, if you're working on building or growing your family in your 30s, you're not going to want to be paying credit card companies any interest when that money could be used on your family. And finally, this last item on this list was something that I personally had never really, you know, thought about or given much thought to because as someone who budgets a lot, I do create budgets when I allocate a certain amount of money every single place. And then whatever's left over, I just leave in my checking for, you know, random spending here and there. But this last one indicated that you should create a budget where every single dollar in that budget is allocated to a specific category and you are left with nothing. So basically you are spending every single penny of your paycheck. And to do that, all you have to do is create a budget that is detailed enough and thorough enough where every single cent is accounted for. Whether that means, you know, leaving $10 a month in your checking and leaving some in your savings and making sure that you're paying off as much as you can for any debt that you have, you're putting away uh, money for, you know, emergencies, just make sure that every single cent is accounted for and build a super thorough budget, which accounts for all of your money. Now, this is something that I'm going to be trying here in the next couple months, and I will share with you a new budget that I do create because I think I'm long overdue with sharing with you guys my budget and exactly how my finances stand today. And so I'm going to be creating a budget that really does account for every single penny that I make. All right, guys, well, that's all I had for this video. If you agree with this list or have anything you'd like to add, just let me know in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, please take a moment and just click the subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already and we'll see you next time. <laughs>